burning the burning the paper. Yeah. Okay. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for coming to see our author John Er. I'm just gonna see us to discuss John's new book, Straight Mountains. My name is Marella and I'm the events and social media coordinator here at Fighting Books. And if you did buy the book, thank you. It really helps us continue to bring more in-person programs to you guys. To be mindful of our colleagues who do ask that the authors can see it by 7 p.m. because we are closing up the store. And to make our event more accessible, we are recording tonight's event. And it'll be off in our YouTube channel within the next following days. So now I'm going to do a quick um, intro. Zhang Er is a poet born in Beijing, China, and is the author of multiple books of poetry in Chinese, like Brushes on Bird and So Translating Rivers and Cities. Both have been published by Separate Press, and she has also published a number of chapbooks in English translation. She co-edited Another Kind of Nation, an anthology of contemporary Chinese poetry, published by Talisman House Publishers in 2007. She is married to the American poet Leonard Schwartz, and they live in the Pacific Northwest with their daughter, Cleo. And she is a professor at the Evergreen State College in Washington. We also have Joseph Donahue, who is an American poet, critic, and editor. He was born in Dallas, Texas, and grew up in Lowell, Massachusetts. He attended Dartmouth College for his undergraduate degree and received his doctorate at Columbia University, and he lived in New York for many years. But he now resides in Durham, North Carolina, where he teaches at Duke University. The third volume in Joseph Donahue's ongoing poem, Terra Lucida, entitled Dark Church, was published by Birch Books in 2015. Other recent titles include Red Flash, and A Black Field, and The Salts. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Is this okay? Well, thank you all for coming out. It's a, it's a great uh, treat to be here and to read with Jean Air, uh, who uh, is the author of uh, author of these poems. I'm just kind of the uh, the wheel man for them in English, but um, it was quite a process. To uh, I, I don't know a word of Chinese. I want you to be upfront about that. Um, but so I relied on her patience to uh, per, to uh, um, give me her English versions of her own Chinese poems. So they were written in Chinese first, and then she then translated them into English, and then I kind of just worked over that. Um, so we're going to be reading from uh, about four poems or so, maybe more from from this book, uh, First Mountain, and she will certainly have much more to say about it than I will, but it was an extraordinary uh, journey both for me to work with her, uh, work with her words in English, and uh, no doubt a journey for her in her patience in uh, waiting for me to get around to uh, finishing the poems. Uh, but it was, an, it's an extraordinary story about the poet who, a poet who uh, has to go home to kind of an, almost an epic, epic kind of narrative, uh, go home to uh, bury the ashes of, of her grandparents and the kind of discoveries both going there and coming back are, are quite profound and moving. So we're going to just start with the first poem and, and I'll read the English first. Is okay. that what we said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, just and how many of you speak um, Chinese? <laughs> Oh, oh whoa, whoa, we got a whole crowd. I'll just go home. I'm done. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, although it's, then, then you'll see how 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 sh how short I have fallen. Um, so this is the first section of the first poem. Our prelude. Turn on a light, illumine my dream, with more than just bright anticipation. A road, branches, a window, mountains hang on the wall, maddening, meticulous, every tree a bright thread, every fold pure silk, pinch of fingers, a needle. Nonetheless, we arrive, 
sky high village, centuries old. In the yard, hundred year old voices and Chinese scholar trees, Sephora. A hundred year old lotus, demure as a bride's bound feet. Time held to be dead, returned, but in flames. See an online vagina. See internet masturbation. See severe events and fate await me. Blue-gray brick up to sky. Blue-gray stone paving the yard. Long embroidered sleeves, cambric vests. The trim of the skirt, months of a bride's name. See a moment. See a marriage of 70 years. Is this the light of life? Is this the sacrament that lets you live, that lets you die? Watch them, the man and the woman. Each takes the end of a strip of red satin, a marriage ritual, walking down the slope, walking up the slope. Kneel down, heaven, earth, ghosts, gods, father, mother, mountain, a mountain to the south, devours the light, maddening over the bride's eyes, a red scarf, blind yourself to the four directions, turn around, turn around, only then do you see in front of the mountain, the river, turn, you're turning, the river is flowing. The Chinese version of this uh, prelude one. Yeah. 怎样的开关在预想之外把梦照亮通向那里的路出岔不过因为一扇有风景的窗山挂在墙上让人发疯的用让人发疯的仔细嗅出每一棵树沉积岩的每一层不过因为有一根针捏在手里的确去过那里了一百年的山村院落一百年的话语怀树一百年新娘小脚出嫁已为死去的日子重新燃起看后现代的肚子手影互联网重大事件和等我的使命青砖到顶青石铺地绣花长绣麻纱马甲裙边花了嫁娘几个月的时间不长相比她七十年的婚姻开关生命的开关是这场让你生让你死的婚姻看他们手牵红缎走下坡走上坡跪下天地鬼神父母山这座坐南望北的山堵在眼前让人发疯红盖头蒙四方转过身你转过身才看见山前面的水转过。Jean-Yer, uh, would you like to say a little something about the, this, this, about the, the next two poems, really, about the, the process of what they're talking about, the trip to the, right. to the country? Yeah. Uh, so the as Joe mentioned, so the whole uh, narrative of the poem is after my grandparents passed away, they left their uh, will is they want to have their ashes bring back to their ancestral burial grounds in Shanxi province, um, which is in the center China, north north central China, at among the mountains. Um, my grandparents has been living in a different part of China uh, the last 
20 years of their life they lived in Beijing with, with us. So I never been to Shanxi province before. Um, so even though there is such an ancestral uh, home seems to be important for my grandparents, I always thought I'm modern woman. Uh, I, at that time I lived in New York, come to US to study, grew up in Beijing, so never feel it's it's just conceptual, okay, there is a sister town somewhere. So this trip, um, the whole family taking my grandparents' ash, uh, going back to China, really waking up a whole new aspect, or a whole new dimension of the contemporary world I know, uh, and make me see myself in a different light. So um, the introduction, kind of the prelude we just heard has kind of, you feel it's like a switch on the light. All of a sudden you see things differently. And, and that was this trip. Um, so um, I do not want to explain the poetry, but it's, this is like a journey to, the poetry itself is a journey for me to, after the trip, to discover all the tradition, all the things I see. On the trip was very busy, relatives and whole village of people looked like my mother, my grandfather, <laughs> whole village, another village looked like my grandpa. So you start to feel, am I a, a really an individual or I'm just a clone? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and and uh, does that make me feel more empowered? Or oh, 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 uh, feel, oh, feel that uh, I'm less so because I'm I don't have, my destiny is content by all these people. They may have their, the same same character as I am. So it's all these questions. And also we discover a linguistic challenge uh, 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 of Chinese language moved so thousands of years. But in Shanxi, somehow many uh, archaic expressions still preserved. And physically, even the furnitures and cooking utensils looking like the ritual um, uh, um, worshipping utensils you will see in museum, the people still using it in their homes. So we said, wow, this is really the roots of the culture. So, um, and, and so all that, uh, the short trip make me did like a year or two research and come up with this whole writing uh, published in Taiwan uh, in 2005. And then I, uh, but, uh, Joe and I, we are friends for a long time. So we, the translation takes us uh, more than 10 years. Uh, so gradual work. And uh, anyway, so the next two poem um, and is, as once we go back to the ancestral village, so I, the next poem is my grandmother's village. So we go to different part of the, um, the Shanxi province, Qingshui. That's where it's um, their village located. So the next poem is uh, um, my grandmother's village called Chuezai. It's a, a, a mountain village on top of a hill. That's where when the disaster, when the Japanese come, everybody hide in that village because it's almost not accessible uh, unless you know the road. So that was the poem. Uh, okay, this is my grandmother's village. Yes. Yeah, I, I, just, I just wanted to add one thing that I found incredibly uh, helpful, uh, a remark Yang Air made when we were in the middle of this, and she said, but reading English versions uh, from a language I don't read, from a culture I don't know. And she said, you know, <laughs> going back to this ancestral village was as weird for me as this is for you. This was not the China that I grew up with as the daughter of, uh, of, of the city yeah. and of Marxists in the city. And to go back to these old rituals uh, was, and I, I found that a very helpful just observation for me to kind of say, okay, you know, we're both <laughs> trying to figure this out. So this is my grandmother's village. Cross the bridge over the hill by the village gate, a massive Chinese scholar tree, gray-blue slate road, 
arriving at last at grandmother's first home. The old houses are still there. Elder grand uncle, second grand uncles are still there. Hens, pigs in a pen. Taking it all in brings an unexpected touch of grief. In the living room, photos of ancestors on the wall. A desire to trace the cheekbones with a finger, to cup with both hands the curves of the chin, a petite no nose, round moist, round moist lips, to feel the glow of health, the beauty of a daughter, as I might feel the clean stream of the Apricot River. What in all this could ever be the true source of these feelings? Shall we snap another picture? Catch one moment in the thousand years it takes to bring a couple to the same bed. No longer quarreling about the inheritance, you laugh. The offspring of a master carpenter, her big hands twist in front of her legs. She grins and shows her teeth without modesty. Maybe she senses there is no other chance to fulfill the obligation of prayer. Doors closed, window, flower of double happiness, wood cross beam, floorboards creak. Grandma, I hear your cough in my throat. The shade of the old family house left by the sunlight, like her unwilling tears, meanders down the hill. Are you here, Grandma, here? Her sadness becomes my sadness. Quezhai, your village, the eternal back and forth between mountains and rivers, can this be brushed aside without answering? That is the question. Chue Jai. 过桥上坡女儿已表堂堂紧闭的门已经变得可以接近，变成我的悲哀，缺盏，山与水，永恒的对话，可以一带而过，不回答。Burning paper, yeah. burning night paper. Yeah, and so this next uh, short poem is um, really talking one of the burial ritual is at midnight. Actually, every three hours you're supposed to burn um, uh, paper money for the dead. So uh, before the burial, so it's as part of the ritual. Okay. Burning night paper. Can love recall, can love remember itself? What time is it? Is this the moment? Stay up, keep your vigil. Through the night, stay up, keep
keep the hours, keep the memory snow. Thread, 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 entwine and tie and tangle me. Spindle, this is the night one thinks of a spindle, of a glossy black long braid of an oil lamp, of a daughter-in-law rushing to weave red cloth for herself before her in-laws get up. The deeper realms are hidden in the overlapping maze of warp and woof. Love never wants to go back except in a dream, which is now, a pinch of tonight, a volume of darkness, of light, of an ash red bandana burning. What desires to be said? What desires to be written down? Burning, burning down so we can leisurely converse, so the full story can be told, slowly burning, one stack, another stack. You no longer try to comb through the thread in front of you. Is it time? Entering the third watch, the vigil, deep in the night. Night, can it remember? Can it be remembered? Like night itself, the embrace of the fire flickers into every orifice. Caress the tender flame blazing with fulfillment. We stand up, we kneel down. Night, can it remember, can it be remembered? Red ash. Shoye Love never wants to go back except in its dream, which is now a modern, modern, a moment of tonight, the volume of darkness, of light, the ash red bandana here. Shao, 想说的,想写的,烧掉. 这样才能充分的谈这个故事里要好好谈的话。慢,一扎,又一扎,不再企图理清眼前的现所,是时候了。三更,夜能记住吗?火的怀抱,像夜无孔不入,抚摸纵情的燃烧。我们站起来,再跪下去,能记住吗? Red Ash。There is a lot of, um, we're kind of giving you the outline. Uh, there's a very, but there's a very rich human context in the work. You know, there are, there's a complexity of family relations I can't begin to grasp that are people showing up, uh, complicated kins, kinships, uh, as well as personal relations and interrelations, but this is the outline of that story, but no, there's much else going on in the book. Fifteen. I thought it's in ninety nine. What's that? Page ninety nine. Oh, okay. Well, I can't read that either. I see. Yep. Yep. Got it. This is this is called Paper Clothes for the Dead. <clears throat> It is so cold. Take out coats, gloves, sweaters from the luggage. Put on all the shirts. Elder brothers, woolen long johns on loan. It's the first day of the 10th lunar month. We wear them all. 
insulated jackets, insulated pants, hats, shoes, as we begin to make winter clothes for the dead, paper shirts, paper pants, colorful coats. You sit right outside our circle under the fluorescent light. Your face darkens. It is so cold. Your skeleton is trembling. Watch us perform our ritual craft. Last year's old felt hat, trim, loose, and curved up. Buttons on the front of the jacket lost. Black cotton jacket, the batting exposed where I can't mend it. My sister-in-law says, weren't there any good clothes? Your great-grandfather and great-grandmother were buried in old clothes, in rags. The hat now in the casket, carried now out from the cave at the foot of the hill, came off your fifth uncle's head. The old yard was confiscated by Mao. Your grandparents lost the house and farm and animals. They had to dig a cave in the side of a hill, put a door in it, and call it home. Have you seen it? Now it's a storage room. Even in this new house, with its heating and hot water, my hands are still cold. How could any hole in this earth not be cold? Scissor the clothes, brighten their color, approximate some new fashion style. Hat, suit, tie, otherwise the neck will be cold. Your neck, landlord, landlady, mine. Fifth uncle says, your great grandpa himself opened the sheep pen to the revolution, waved his hand. Okay, he said, let it all be divided up. Even the mattress and blankets were taken from them. Learn to live on less. The family motto written on a scroll on the wall of the former sitting room of the old property. Your great grandfather's house was crucial to the underground in the fight against Japan. Your great grandparents snuck food to the anti-Japanese association. The day before the Japanese army attacked, your great grandparents opened up the family larder. They called people from miles around to help themselves. All that night, the farm animals were agitated and at daybreak, they bolted into the mountains. The Japanese marching along the Apricot River dared not climb the hill. They got nothing. That is one part of our immense pride. After the war, in the 50s, some villages revolted against the landlords, even killed a few. But in our village, it was our great grandpa himself, the village head for many years, who called the people and divided up his own property. Even today, Elder Brother says, our family has many members. Many live too far away, but others come to help. Of course, we treat them well. We don't scrimp on liquor, cigarettes, candy, and cookies. We give many gifts for a day's labor. It's so cold, but less so with all of us somehow related building the outdoor fire pits for the feast, cooking, setting the table, carrying the coffins, holding the funeral banners, wreaths, setting off firecrackers, filling in the grave. Whatever we are doing now, we are reliant on each other, are blessed by, are insured by the virtues of the dead. Cut, cut with scissors, red hat, yellow boots, sky blue tie, apricot, yellow scarves. Only such colors honor where the ancestors now live, a celestial heavenly palace, an underground palace, a gold mountain, a silver mountain. I wish I could 
He was so expressive. So cold. <laughs> yeah, it is. It was very cold. <laughs> so that was also a ritual when you um, moving burial ground, uh, and you would choose that uh, particular day um, of uh, uh, in lunar years. It's ten months, and uh, uh, the first day of ten months is where you burn the uh, sun, the old uh, winter clothes as well as moving into the graves. So that's uh, it's very ritualized. But that's this is the scene about that. Song Han Lang Da Yi Shou Tao Mao Yi He Xing Li Li Suo Yo the Chen Shan Shen Zhi Da Ge the Mao Ku Yin Li Shi Yue Yi Dou Chuan Zhang Wang Nian Yi Nian Ku 帽子鞋，老去的人穿新衣，纸衣纸裤，五彩的外套。你就坐在我们圈外，荧光灯下，脸色发黑，冷啊，骨架打抖，看着我们手工。去年的旧毡帽卷了毛边儿，前襟的扣子掉了，黑布袄蘸棉花。够不着也缝不着。大嫂说：“哪里有好衣裳？你祖爷祖奶奶穿着旧衣服下葬，帽子还是你五叔头上摘的，从窑洞里抬出来。祖爷祖奶就住在山根那孔窑，老院没收了，地主地主婆自己去挖窑，去看啦。现在变成了储藏室，新盖的房。”暖气、热水，手还冻呢。土窑哪能不冷？脚吧，脚，换个鲜艳的颜色，新款式，鸭舌帽、西服、领带，不然脖子冷。你的脖子，地主的，地主婆，我的。吴叔说：“你老爷爷自己打开羊圈，挥挥手，分就分了吧。”家里的铺盖也搬出来，学吃亏的条幅悬挂在老屋正堂中，呃，正屋中堂，老院正堂中堂 ，sorry， 老院正屋中堂。打日本，你老爷爷老奶奶家里住游击队，捐粮给西蒙会，日军要扫荡，头天把家里粮库打开，方圆几十里的乡亲都喊来分粮。一夜牲口闹得不睡，逃难，天一亮往山里钻。日本人睡着，顺着信河走，不敢爬山，什么也没捞到。这就是我们家的传统。土改，别的村斗地主，闹出人命。咱们村都是你祖爷爷自己，他是多年的老村长，喊人来分财。大哥说：“就是今天，咱们家人口多，外面的人多，事儿也多，人家来帮忙，咱就厚待人家。酒是好的，烟是好的，糖果好，还的礼也比得上人家一天的功夫。这么冷的天，都沾亲呢，大灶、烹调、摆席、抬菜、打翻、花圈、放鞭、填土，都靠众人。”托祖宗的福，脚啊脚，红帽、黄靴、天蓝领带、杏黄围巾，才配得上老人住的天宫、地宫、金山和银山。This poem is called、uh, This poem is called Tiger Woman, and it has a it has a footnote that says there is an old Chinese legend about a hunter who meets a beautiful woman in the forest and marries her. She bears him several children. Then one day she jumps out of the window, turns into a tigress, and disappears into the forest. 
Isn't that the O.R. Green or the woman? <laughs> <laughs> ah, now we really <laughs> a, a note on the poem there, folks. You heard it first. Okay. Uh, anything? Should we just go? Do you want to say anything else? Um, no. Okay. Let, let's, let, yeah. It's, it's, this is after the trip, so. The, 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 the trip kind of goes from New York to China to, well, to China, then deep, deep into China, and then returns to, in the last section to, to, New York, to New York City. Tiger Woman. Shifting from one plane of reality to another, you leap over the table, sit down robed in tiger skin, all while on a mobile phone. Can poetry keep pace with your imagined companion in the woods? Whether for a long life together or a short fling, at the moment you're not choosing. Back home is the world of landlines and answering machines, empty and silent as desire in springtime. Slush in the street swaps over. Romance with all its fatal and obvious cruelty. And so the delicate thorn of the imagination dipped in drizzling rain is sharpened into a gleaming tiger claw. Through the wall drifts a Buddhist prayer chant. Eight commandments, or, or is it ten? Someone is singing the Dharma. You may choose not to listen, but you still have to hear it. The chanters walk away. You too are only passing through. So then leave this black tavern at the edge of the mountain before you, before you served up in dumplings. These days, you can talk about video games, cut your hair short like a boy, keep your natural feet, or acquire tiny ones traditionally bound as you quickly walk, force a smile, feel refreshed, lightly touch up your brows, then jump in front of a train. Oh, wait, that's another story. Do you know why Anna Karenina did that? Mom, you are not smart. Hope you will be smarter than me on this sheet of white paper where everything can be written. Write nothing. Emptiness is spreading. Silence bears the fangs I am unable to avoid. Obviously, you are passing through, still in a red shirt, still not buttoned up in line for the evening party, not talking. We are always not talking, only looking. And other organs, not just our eyes, are shifting positions. This glass of cold water gets me drunk. I will pretend to fall in love tonight, show off my animal nature, write down all the entanglements that will embarrass me tomorrow morning. Man, woman, as long as you are not choosy, there will always be some tail. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I did much when I was much younger. Hu Nu, leave here, in the movement, put a chair on the ground, paint your nails, play the flute, and look at the distant horizon. Look at the distant horizon. Look at the distant horizon. 是春天拖泥带水的色情，把残酷误认为浪漫，显然致命。设想的嫩刺能不能就着毛毛雨磨成利爪？隔筋隔墙永经，八戒、十戒唱法号，不听也听得见。他们走了，还有你。过路客除了离开或者包进人肉包子，难有另外的可。讨论游戏机，再把头发剪得像男孩，天足或一对小脚，紧走，笑一笑，笑一笑，让人心羡。
浅浅画眉，之后扑向火车。哦，那是另外一个故事。你说为什么？安娜·卡列尼娜，妈妈，你不聪明。希望你比我聪明，在这张什么都可以写的白纸上，什么都不写。空白铺开，如沉默，露出犬齿。你让我无法回回避。显然，你已经还是红衬衫，还是不系扣，站在参加晚会的行列中，不讲话。我们总是不讲话，只有眼神和其他器官交换位置，像这杯凉水灌醉我，假装在今夜相爱，露出本相。写下种种凌晨让我难为情的缠绵。男人、女人，只要你不挑剔，总有一条较好的尾巴。That's all, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments. Do you have any questions for the poet? Translate. <laughs> Collaborator. Well, that tiger woman. Yes. Um, when you're writing, do you, for certain subjects, do you tend to work one language or the other? What sort of pushes you to write in English? You mean Chinese or English? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my poetry is mainly um, in Chinese. Yeah. Um, here I threw in a few lines of English um, as an experiment to be bring out um, the reality of this multiple life. A lot of people, a lot of us are living, live, are living in. Um, so was not intended as carry as much weight as the Chinese. Yeah, and there were uh, other lines that even has. Um, uh, Ladings in it, even like coding it, uh, and then classical Chinese trying to bring out the flavor. But Men Salts is, for me, uh, poetry is has to be in, uh, written in the uh, primary language, uh, original language, because I, at least for me, it's, uh, I feel so much level to Chinese, so much, so much shade to it than the English. Um, yeah, and uh, and Chinese character, as many of you learning Chinese know, it uh, has um, images and shapes, so you feel it's more tangible. Has its disadvantage too, but compared to English, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so his question is, so when did I wrote this poem? Was it in the 80s or 90s? Yeah. Um, was so research. Um, trying to learn the rituals. So I wrote this at this time. I wrote it after 2002 to 2003. I wrote it in Chinese. This book is from 2005 to Taiwan. So my poem is written, uh, the trip was taken in 2001, 2002. It would take me one year to research about all the rituals I experienced and research what it means. Some of the rituals date back a um, couple of thousand years ago in the Book of um, Ritual. Uh, 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 yeah. So my classical Chinese was not that great. Uh, well, that's how I learned. Is I tackle, tackle a, a project I learned along the way. Um, so it take me a, a year to do research, another year or two to finish the poem. So the book was published in 2005. Um, and I was invited to Taipei Poetry, International Poetry Festival 
So I think the Poetry Festival uh, bring out this book uh, from Taiwan. The cover image is different from the English. So it's by a uh, Chinese um, visual artist, um, Qin Song. He's a poet, Taiwan poets, and uh, uh, artist as well. So, and it's a book, book uh, how do I say, it? it's a wood carving. Uh, uh, so I chose that image, kind of slightly matching, but not quite exactly. Yeah, if you um, research Qin Song, Qin is Qin Shi Huang, Qin Song is Song Shui Song. He's quite well known. He happened to be living in New Jersey and New York. So we all live in this kind of um, hybrid worlds, mm -hmm. like a better worlds. So the reality is, um, it's really hard to pin on, but in this shifting world, which kind of interesting. And also can you uh, can you tell me which city or which town uh, you write in this book because you, you said you write uh, the 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 book is in Shanxi, is in which city? Shanxi, um, Qinshui Xian. Qinshui is a uh, San. Uh, I'm a teacher, so I'm looking for a word. Qinshui <laughs> is a San Jiao Shui, a new Xin. Qinshui Xian, Jin Dongnan. Um, so Shanxi, um, not Shanxi, Shanxi. Um, so that's where my uh, grandparents uh, came from. Qinshui is considered uh, one of the most poverty-stricken places, uh, which is really uh, completely different from my impression. Um, So-called uh, Pingkunxian, it means there's no industry, not much development. Ended up many things were preserved. And the farmers was, um, yeah, it counts as then young people, a lot of young people left, uh, but, but um, they working elsewhere. Uh, ended up the, the mountains used to have a lot of farms, now it's all returned to forest. It's quite, uh, quite beautiful. Um, yeah, so that was in 2001. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah, okay. Hi, Rachel. And you can Thank you for coming as my friend Rachel, professor <laughs> at the Duke University. We're together. <laughs> um, you, what was the story of your grandparents? Did they leave as young adults? Like, did they marry in that town? Yeah. yeah. They marry in the country, the village. Yeah. Um, and my grandpa is the first generation of Chinese um, uh, son of of landlord, I mean, well-to-do farm family mm -hmm. who went to school, has some Western education. So he was, he's majored in, at that time there's not quite university yet, Western culture is there. So he went to um, um, a technical college and uh, so he's majored in chemistry. Uh, but because at that time, um, Chinese always traditional education, if you're educated, you're intellectual, so you qualify you to become official, uh, taking charge of things. But he learned chemistry, so he considered would be the leader in anything science, right? So <laughs> his first job was uh, build railroad. <laughs> so clearly there were some misconceptions. So he was uh, was uh, signed away because the railroad goes to different places. So he was educated um, in the pro provincial town in Taiyuan, uh, had a degree in uh, chemistry, and then built the Nanko Tie uh, Lu. It's a railroad in Beijing. So he lived outside Shanxi for a, a little bit because of that assignment. My grandma joined him in Beijing, outskirts of Beijing, built, built the first railroad. Uh, then the Japanese uh, war, the Second World War, the Japanese face of Asian started. So, um, yeah, they married in Shanxi province, um, but they lived outside. And then when the war broke out, they left the hometown to go to southern China. Um, so they have been in and out of Shanxi, but away for a long time so they that's one of the reasons they ended up living with us and 
still um, trying to bring their ashes back. So did they request that you bring their ashes back? Yeah. When they were yeah. little and dead? Yeah, my grandma passed away first uh, at 93. And uh, my grandpa saying, okay, once I pass, so bring us together. Because they, they never separate, they marry when they are 19, one is 19, the other 16 or something. Uh, <laughs> and they live a long life, go through wars. And so um, my grandpa passed away uh, when he was 99 years old. So they, they went back together. So uh, their life is epic. <laughs> 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 That's why when the first poem they were talking about, 70 years of marriage. Any other questions, comments? Oh, one more. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm curious how the, the sounds of, of words in, in different languages impacted the, the translating process and maybe um, choosing a, a certain word for the sound of the Oh, boy, I, uh, you know, I just, um, I was just working with, with the rough translation, and at a certain point, I just, you know, especially since I had no real access to the original language, um, you know, I thought the only thing I could really do was simply try to make it what seemed to me as musical and full as I could. And I, I just kind of shamelessly went in that direction. Now, as opposed to trying to, like, for example, Jean Yer talked about, you know, there's stratas of diction in the Chinese, so there's classical diction, you know, that there was, there was language from the village. Like, it, 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 there's nothing I could do that, that wouldn't send, you know, I, I couldn't get that in, even if I understood the Chinese problem. So I just had to kind of make a baseline. I, I, I joked, I used to joke to people, like I felt like one of those like grade B movie directors who gets the, the footage and he's, he's under pressure to, you know, make a movie, come on, just make it go. I just felt like I had to be kind of make this a readable, as readable and musical text and, and, and you know, as close to what, what I understood the meaning to be, but, but as far as select as the sound, I just kind of had to imagine my way into it and, and hope that I was somewhere close. And I did have the, the author there, so if she let me off the leash, would have helped me. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's a kind of a back and forth a little bit. And uh, I think I'm just very happy. It was really close. Um, the, uh, the cadence is very close. And uh, um, Joe Smith Donahill, your professor, it's really a great poet. I mean, I'm not just, because that's one of the reasons I think we uh, capable this translation can work so the poets has to be it feels like a kindred spirit uh, and he understand what I'm trying to do so I and when I do the first draft and they will sit down he said what what's happening here so and I would just use kind of nose and hand gestures and, but as a poet, he's practically right. He practice poetry writing like I am, so he know kind of where I'm trying to, what texture I want. So he's really good. So it's just, uh, but he's very slow. So I just. Have to be very <laughs> <laughs> I think you gotta wrap it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, is there a favorite poem in Chinese and a favorite poem in English of yours? Uh, um, there's in the book uh, we just gave one example of of a uh, of a poem in oh, Chinese right. and English in the back, in right? the, back the last oh, okay. because originally um, Zephyr Press usually my past other books they some they all has face to face English translation mm -hmm. but this book is already so sick um, they just <laughs> saying okay poetry book this big is not not going to work. So we just choose one poem at the end, so you can kind of see uh, the, the uh, transformation of my draft versus 
uh, Joe's uh, uh, finely worked uh, lines, um, which really uh, all his poetic skills. I mean, it was yeah. incredible. Yeah. So I, I would say it's a collaborative work. It's not just simple translations. No, it's it, invaluable to be able to just say, have the poet right there and just say, just tell me what's, you know, what was going on, what, what you're picturing in your head, what, you know, help me see what this is. And it was an, you know, an incredible opportunity to just to be able to check. Uh, is this boat floating in front of the tree? Or is it like, like all these things about Chinese that like left me you know, what are the relationship between these objects, or what is the like? I, I and, and so we would just have to kind of. You know, she would explain there were things in the, China, the Chinese language worked a particular way. Like for example, the the characters often Zhang Er would start to describe a passage for me by describing what the characters depict the pictures like in the print, and I was going like, like what do I do with this? <laughs> you know, I, I've got A, B, C, D. We don't really have a lot of pictures in it. So, but trying to kind of get that sense of how embedded in in the visual imagination for for her the, the poems were was, was incredibly helpful. And also originally, because I know uh, there are so many background informations, right? In the Chinese poets, I don't have any notes because I assume all the Chinese readers would understand. But for Joe's draft translation, I have like a one, two, three, four, five, sometimes eight, seven, nine, two page notes. And, uh, and Joe decided it's not, it's not poem if you have like a two notes, like academic papers would be very drag, drag. It's, it doesn't work. So he takes some of the notes, put it in the poem. So you feel the, so bridge the gaps. Uh, so people know, okay, who count this, for example, talking about the Grand, uh, the land being confiscated. I didn't say anything in Chinese because Chinese people know uh, who confiscated, and he would add in confiscated by Mao. So that is kind of rather than start notes, yeah, but it's, it's yeah. incorporated. In yeah, right. Yeah. So I think it's really worked. Uh, it helped. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Thank you.